The first issue with Jolt is the plot. There's a lot of other issues as well, but you're first of all going to have to accept someone caring enough about Jai Courtney to not only remember that he exists once he's left your eye line, but also to care enough that once someone finally achieves vengeance for all those terrible, poor, sweet, innocent films he's been in to go on a murderous rampage against a criminal empire, rather than raising a beer in salute and moving on to James Corden. Once you're past that teeny tiny little issue, you've got the fact that this film somehow doesn't work. At all. I mean, it's something amazing that a film like this can get so much stuff bang on the nose and yet somehow still be the most boring thing since someone insisted on showing you every one of their recent holiday photographs to the Isle of Wight. Oh. You've got the plot, which sounds like a blend of John Wick and Crank. You've got amazing neon drenched visuals. The castle seems to be having a blast before this mask, but I'm simply aghast at the talent this director masked and completely squandered because jolt, it just doesn't work. I mean, the setup's great with Beckinsale playing as someone who has a slightly murderous anger management problem that she controls with the help of an electrode lined vest she uses to shock herself back to normalcy whenever she gets homicidal. After the first guy she's ever fallen for is murdered, she goes on a revenge filled rampage to find the killer while the cops pursue her as their chief suspect. Now tell me you couldn't see that working. Yes. Yummy, yummy, yummy. But the trouble with these films is pacing. Always pacing. Once you've set this type of film in motion, you can't really stop and allow the audience time to breathe or, or try to develop characters that much. No, you have to keep going. Adding to the film's mystery with each fight scene building on the one before and Jolt just doesn't do that. It never gets going. I mean, it has a lot of starts and false dawns. Our lead gets into a car chase with the police but it's over before it starts. She goes to take on a fight club so that she can interrogate a bozo. The first rule of fight club is, you do not talk about fight club. The second rule of fight club is, you do not talk about fight club. But that's over in two minutes. There's a foot chase that teases it being fun, inventive and mad, but it never goes anywhere, which is ironic, don't you think? A little too ironic. And yeah, I really do think they could have done more with this. It doesn't help that what little plot there is is extremely predictable. Things happen when you think they're going to happen, how you think they're going to happen, to whomever you think they're going to happen to. Which is a shame because promise and potential burst out of every frame of this film. Everyone can do action. Everyone is aware of the film they're in and acting accordingly, except from Courtney, but he's a block of Tesco's own styrofoam and everything he's in, so he doesn't count. The set people, the lighting people, the sound people, everything in this movie could work and produce a new action franchise for those who just want a blast of fun, but for that to happen the film needs to move in a consistent fashion, and this just doesn't. Which is a shame because it's the only flaw in this film. With a few tweaks of the script it could have reached its potential, but as it is, whilst it's nice to see this cast having fun together, it would be nice if the film had made me happy as well. You just needed to work the fight scenes a little more, keep the pace up, and I would have liked this film a lot more than I did. But they didn't. So, I didn't. So, I think you should skip it. But what do you guys think? And what is your favourite Mad as a Box of Frogs action film? Comment below, let me know. I'm Daniel, it's been a Dunking. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe.